and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 128 of I Got Gameplay. Now tonight is going to be a bit of a different episode. It's a pre-tape that of the interview that I did at the MCM London Comic Con. Now what I did is I was introduced to an amazing person, a lovely voice actress by the name of Hinden Walsh. You will know her as Princess Bubblegum in Adventure Time. She was also in Teen Titans Go as Starfire and Gurun Lagan. She is an amazing voice actress with a wealth of experience. Someone who's had time in the gaming industry and also animation as well. So she will talk about her processes with myself and a few other interviewers and also sat down with me for a small little one-on-one -on -one interview. She is an amazing individual. And if you've ever thought about going into the voice industry, I would suggest that you take a look at this interview. Tell us what you think, of course, if you leave your comments below and, you know, leave us a nice little comment on iTunes as well. That would be great. And I just want to say how amazing this experience has been. The one thing I have to say about MCM, it's been a journey, you know, a journey for myself and a journey, for, of course, for my co-host Anina, who just wanted to experience something in a sense and interview some amazing people. But in the end, we ended up, you know, seeing a lot more, a lot of an insight into what acting really is and how basically an actor goes through their process. So I hope you enjoy this, guys, and I shall see you again for well, probably the end of the show. So see you then. Uh, hi, Hendon. Um, hey. My name is Michael Burhan, and this is uh, my colleague Anina here. And hi, we're hi. basically, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Adventure Time Thank uh, and Tea Titans. And um, what, a few questions I want to ask is firstly, you've, you've done voiceover work for uh, animation and also for games. What is the process kind of different in both of those worlds? Um, yes, very different. So I'm sure you know this. Um, <laughs> like, uh, original animation is recorded as an ensemble in a video game, you're all alone. Yeah, always, all alone. Um, your script is a series of lines. It's sort of like, I think Jennifer Hale said, it's like you they took a script, put it through a shredder, threw it up in the air, and then gave it to you, and you're supposed to act it. Um, it'll say, like, very angry, and that's all you'll know about <laughs> the line. And you usually do three takes of each line, usually getting more and more intense as it goes for video games. Um, there's lots of screams, a short scream, a medium scream, a medium angry scream, a long plaintive wail, uh, <laughs> which is why video games are often very taxing vocally. Uh, yeah, but that's the difference. You're not doing wild sounds so much for for animation and you can see at the moment like there's um a huge fan base in terms of the adventure time series you know you've got like um like clothes you've got merchandise uh, of course like the dress that you're wearing at the moment and there's also like this this huge amount of video games that are starting to come out now like uh, a, a couple of games that one i played recently was the uh secret of the nameless kingdom do you find like the did you kind of estimate like the the show would be this big that the popularity would be so huge and encompass around the world to the point where it's just got such a huge following it's become in a sense iconic yes <laughs> <laughs> i did yeah. and, and how, do you, how do you find it kind of um like being like the character like bubblegum for instance because she's very <coughs> peppy at one moment and another moment she can be very kind of straightforward and I, yeah. I think in a sense adult. Oh yes, uh, well bubblegum has evolved over time, um, which has a lot to do with, we have had different directors on the show. And so initially I was directed to be kind of sweet, pretty princess, 16 year old princess. And then that changed when they started drawing things and writing things like she's upending tables and yelling <laughs> in German. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it was like, well, this doesn't really go. And then we got into the stuff where it w she was ancient, you know, ancient years old. And Kent Osborne has been directing. He's our head writer for the last several seasons. 
And now we're getting into a, I mean, we have been in, but it's a very flat read. It's a very low key kind of read. Like, yeah. oh man, I got to go handle some royal junk. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just, it's flat. It's understated. Uh, it still can go crazy, but it's not cartoony at all. Yeah, because the story's gotten very, very dark in, in comparison to what it used to be. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And um, one, one question for me. Um, is there someone you see as um, your idol? Some, an actor who you just find incredibly inspiring or another voice an actor you've even worked with? Well, um, everyone who works all the time in animation is in a very select and deserved club. They're the most talented people working in Hollywood as far mm. as I'm concerned. Um, so it's kind of a, a group love. It's everyone I work mm. with is amazing, but no particular standout idol. How about a classic actor from? from I've always kind of been more of a find your own thing. Oh, you know, make good. it original, make mm. it unique, make it something no one else has done. Mm. That sort of thing. Okay. Um, so in terms of like your your voice acting work, because you have done some on camera roles, for instance, what kind of drew you to voice acting? I always wanted to do voice acting from the very beginning, but it's it's very geographically specific. You have to live in Los Angeles, and I started out in Chicago as a stage actor, and then I moved to New York and I did Broadway, and then slowly, finally, I moved to LA. And suddenly there was an opportunity to do voice acting, but still, even with the, um, the resume I came armed with, it took a very long time to get in. It's a very small world <laughs> of people who do animation. So what would your advice be to any actor that's basically looking at, at going into this kind of voice acting? I would say, and maybe my point of view is a little old-fashioned, because I didn't come up in the age of YouTube, but um, you don't go into voice acting. That doesn't happen. You go into acting, you go into stand-up, you go into performing, you become incredible at what you do. You can be an amazing animator, character designer that has great ideas that put your stuff on YouTube and you and your four friends do all the voices and it can happen that way. Um, but voice acting isn't something you shoot for and go for. <laughs> it's got to be a broader thing to begin with. So as someone who's been on like so many hit shows, did you know when you got that first Adventure Time script that it was going to become big? Did you have a sense of it? Yes. I <laughs> absolutely knew that was going to be galactically huge. Um, I'd been a, f a fan of the Federator short did you guys see that? The, yeah, the pilot yeah. with Abraham Lincoln and yeah, and that that was such an amazingly brilliant little piece of animation <laughs> that I knew it would be huge. I can't believe Nickelodeon passed on it. Can yeah, you? I heard. <laughs> oh my gosh. So yes, I was so excited when I got called in for bubblegum. I was like <laughs> it was like of all the auditions I do every day it was like this this is the one I want this let's get this one please let's get this one <laughs> and it worked so yeah I was delighted to work on that show from the beginning so you seem to really love Princess Bubblegum playing her but you've also played villains as well is there like do you have a preference do you is there something fun about playing a Harley Quinn and playing a Starfire or oh my god yes yeah. are you kidding wouldn't you think it was fun you that's the best part about animation that I like so much better than any being seen kind of acting is you can be anything you can be a, a bird and a baby and an old woman and a super villain like all in one day and there are no limitations on what you can do except you know the sounds you can make and the way you can uh, emote it well talking about that is there any like character you found like a real challenge like kind of getting that voice right for that's an interesting question how it works in vo is it's so immediate I'm, it's like a machine gun of creativity. You go in the room, um, you've read the script before, yes, you've seen, well, 
sometimes people don't even read the script and you show up and they'll say, Hinden, can you turn to page five? Uh, there's a Romanian woman who grew up in Italy. We need you to do that right now. Go. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can't do it in less than one second, they'll ask the next person in the room. So it's a little like, boy, I better get this right on the first time. And auditions also, when you go in for them, um, there's no way to really know what the producers want at all. <laughs> it's just a, a stab in the dark. I used to tell classes I would teach that um, until you can read the producers subconscious minds and give them exactly what they don't even know they want yet and all the producers agree <laughs> on what that is, you know, that's the only way you can get every role. Um, but in the booth doing an audition, they'll throw at you, you'll have this idea of what it is, and then they'll throw something else at you, and you've got to do it immediately. Mm. So in terms of time, timing, you know, like, is it harder for me to find certain voices? Um, I can't remember, because it all happens so yeah. fast. <laughs> yes. Um, hi, Hinden. I'm hi. Ellie. So I wanted to ask, um, how, is there any way where you can read the subconscious mind of the producer? <laughs> <laughs> Are you psychic? <laughs> um, no, there's absolutely no way. Um, you'll get descriptions of the character in words. Sometimes you'll get pictures. Sometimes you'll get neither. Sometimes you'll just get dialogue. And, you know, it's like, well, what do they want? It's, I don't know, you know, good luck. <laughs> I also ask, like, how do you prepare? Do you, like, usually go outside and get influenced by a lot of people by listening or by, like, just seeing what's given in front of you and then just bringing it there and then and bringing it to life? Um, yes, I love listening to other accents. It's been really fun being in Europe for the last month and yeah. just <laughs> listening. Um... Being around other people is helpful, yes, um, but really what it is that's most helpful in getting roles is having absolute confidence in the incredibly strange and embarrassing way you're about to do this audition. <laughs> and just going, this is the weirdest voice I can possibly imagine, and either they're going to lock me up or I'll get the show. <laughs> and very often it works. Well, you're always really good at acting. Were you one of those people who was, just had a knack for it? Or did you just train yourself to be able to? Oh, gosh. I always loved accents. Like, just love them. I try to do them. <laughs> I'm not one of those actors that's going to go, yeah, I can do every accent <laughs> in the world. <laughs> um, maybe I can. I have, you know, I'd have to listen and try it. But it's always something I love to play with. And for a while there, I was Mrs. Accent. Much to my, you know, nervousness. <laughs> like, you guys want me to do what? <laughs> what makes you think I can just pull that out? Um, so hopefully it came out okay. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. Um, Hi. So you've done, you've obviously been in your top class cartoons. You've been in Adventure Time and Tea Times, but you've also worked in anime. And yes. I was wondering if there is a difference between voicing a character where you just have a description and then having the Japanese version of the anime that you can kind of work on. Is it is it more restrictive doing dubbing work? Yes. Okay. <laughs> How much should I actually say about this? It's um, in original animation, you're creating the character mm -hmm. and you're collaborating with the artist mm -hmm. and the writer and through, you know, synthesis, that's what the character is. That's a lot of the reason why I'm like, no pictures, I don't want to be seen, because I don't want it to be about, look at me, Hinden, look at me. It's like, no, no, it's about Harley. It's about Starfire. That's who it is. Um, oh, I forgot what we, were, what we were saying. Oh, anime. Anime is, it has its own you know, system, which I found kind of uh, odd to get into. Um, they don't let you read the script. They don't let you see the show. Okay. <laughs> so when you go in, you are blind. You don't know who you're playing, what the scene is about, who you're talking with. You've never heard the other actors in the scene who are going to be doing English because everything is very separate 
and it's just about matching the lip flap mm. and get it it's beep 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 do it now that's fine if you know who you're playing and what the scene is about <laughs> it gets a little strange when those those two things are you're not privy to those two things mm. and you can ask questions but it's like no 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 you're slowing it down you're slowing it down just do it okay, who am i playing <laughs> you know you can kind of go well it's a little girl okay and you can kind of get the emotion in the japanese track but you you don't know even the end of the scene, mm. what's happening. So original animation, you get to read it, collaborate, add to it, improv, mm. all this stuff that it's really organic and you. You think you have more freedom with your characters when it's original animation? Utterly, they animate to us. <laughs> we record the voice track first, mm. then it's animated. Mm. So yeah, we have a lot to do with the creation of the characters. Hi. Hello. Um, <clears throat> I'm obviously going to make Teen Titans Go. That reunited you with the your previous cast. It obviously know you did the new Teen Titans shorts, which led into that. Since shows obviously aren't usually revived in that manner, what was it like to be back together and working? It was team again? heaven. I love those guys. They are my superhero brothers and sister. <laughs> Um, yeah, Kari and Scott, I think, would bail me out of jail, help me move into a six-story walk-up on a Sunday. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was bliss. We'd, we'd all been really hoping the show would come back, and we had a lot of fans writing us saying, bring it back! We have no say, no power in any of that. Um, but we were delighted to hear that Sam Register wanted to bring it back. And what Warner Brothers Animation does is, you might have noticed with every incarnation of the Batman, it's never the same twice. They'll recast stuff, they'll give it a different tone, like Batman the Brave and the Bold was very different than Batman the Animated Series. And the plan was to do that with Teen Titans, but keep the cast together. And so we were all delighted. And we've been having a lot of fun with the comedy. Actually, my cast is so talented. It's just great to see all the things they can do. Do you have a favorite incarnation of the show? Is there like a you know, the favorite kind of incarnation of the Teen Titans show? Is there like one that was specifically like, really liked how it came out and everything? Oh, like a specific episode no, or a so specific like, like, version? There's obviously been different versions. They've oh, obviously changed yeah. in kind of mood and tone and stuff like that. Like the new one is much more kind of like anarchic and yeah. kind of like more jokes, I feel, and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And older versions were kind of more of a like teen drama type vibe to it as well. I, well, I love them both. They're they're both Starfire, which means they're both me, and um, yeah, all the characters, um, my cast, they they're very close with their characters, and we're watching out for them too. You know, it'd be like, I ah, I know she's nice. She wouldn't say that. Like, sorry if you have to really throw down, which you know. But we got used to it, and the writers, uh, Aaron Horvath and Michael Jelinek, are killing it on Teen Titans Go. What they're writing now, guys, oh my, it's like <laughs> such high satire. It's absolutely brilliant. So, I like them both. Out of all the characters you have voiced, is there one you most relate to that you kind of think, that's sort of me, my alter ego? Sort of thing? Wow. Um, well, they're all kind of me, except possibly Madame Rouge, or maybe most Madame Rouge, <laughs> if you know her. Um, they have to be me, or I couldn't do it. I'm, I'm not someone who can just fake it. I have to actually feel it, you know. No marshmallow head reads. No, no, no. <laughs> Is that the same for when you go for an audition, if you don't? feel a connection for the character would you not do the audition or well I would give it a shot because most of the time they're gonna say we know you come back for a callback we have slightly better idea of what we want now so I'll be like here's my you know throwing at the dartboard blindfolded <laughs> <laughs> and they'll say yes we like we know this we know your career so come in and try it this way so yeah I'll go in for everything you know. You're on two very big shows that run concurrently. Do you think because you're a vocal artist, you're you have the freedom to kind of do that? Could you take on another show if you wanted to? Oh, bring it! Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I, I'm doing a, a few. Sh I'm doing 
four or five shows right now, so yeah, all good. That was Hinden Walsh. I hope, guys, that you love that interview, you enjoyed it. Remember to subscribe to the Retro Unlimited Network so that you know you can see more of these and, of course, our special guest for next week. Uh, which is going to be another pre-tape and the reason why we're doing this one is we're going to basically be interviewing an amazing YouTuber in his own right a gentleman who's been in the past of games world who's had experience working for a different company doing gaming reviews and has now you know ventured into his own YouTube channel he is also the amazing guru Larry so check that out next week and as I said guys leave me a comment and if you're someone out there who benefited from this if we could just get to one person that will make my day so guys thank you and as again as always of course this is Michael Burhan for Anina Kasky for Hinden Walsh for each and every one of you saying that we've got gameplay of you <laughs>